guys, so we're back here. Another great video. The bodyweight squat versus the Hindu squat. Which one is better? Which one is which one should you do? Which one uh has maximum impact, benefit for your legs, your entire upper body, your core, your cardio now. These are all great questions. I've been asked these questions. I haven't really well, I posted it to my email list and all that and one of the main reasons, believe it or not, for coming out with Squat 101 was that uh, when I did Zero Excuses Fitness, I really focused on the Hindu Squat. Uh, if there's one flaw, that great superlative book had, um, I ignore what's going on there. <laughs> if there's one great, if one, one flaw that book had, it didn't focus enough upon the bodyweight squat and all its all its uh, variants. Now, the bodyweight squat is a great, great superlative exercise. It's one every old timer did, and this isn't even this isn't even about why you if you ain't squatting, you ain't training. That's a different topic. Uh, anybody who's ever trained knows that, and I've covered that before, galore in my videos and that, but uh, in my videos, my books, my writings, everything. This is essentially, my friend. Uh, something that's been covered in Squat 101, something you need to know, and believe me, that book, even Amazon is putting it on, you know, the best-selling book of the month list and all that, and for, for my own fitness books, and when Amazon says something, you know, you better listen if you're smart. A lot of people like to complain about Amazon, the vast majority of people in this world do, then again, the vast majority of people do nothing but complain about, uh, smart people, or successful people, anyway, I should know, anyway, um, as I put out that email about, uh, do a yearly review where you're at at the end of the year and all that, you guys on my list have got that, uh, email, if not, it's on the blog, the reason is, you, you should do both of these types of squats, but, the main reason is this, my friend. Most people are very weak in the lower back, but they're weak bending backwards, like arching their back backwards. For me, even when I was fat, even when I was out of shape, doing the bridge was always very simple, the gymnastic bridge and all these other movements or reverse push-ups and all that. For most people, that's not the case. Uh, but you asked me to hold that position where I called out plump people yesterday. See the YouTube channel for more. The table position where your back needs to be straight like this instead of arched. When I was fat, that was very difficult. Uh, and a lot of people, and this problem isn't talked about so much in the fitness community, uh, a lot of people have weak hamstrings. They cannot bend Forward. They can still do the backward bends, but bending forward is something that's very ignored because the vast majority of people don't have that problem. They have the opposite problem. And this argument applies to a lot of exercises. The Hindu push-up or the regular push-up. In the Hindu push-up, you arch your back like this, right? When you go up, you're like this, and then you arch. And then you, without an arch, it ain't gonna work. Now, People, and yourself included, who have been doing those for years and years, you know. Now, with a regular push-up, sometimes you... Or not sometimes, the regular push-up, your back is roughly parallel to the floor, right? So I'll often notice myself when I'm doing high reps and all that. Sometimes I'll, you know, when pushing up a large, just a wee little bit. It's not noticeable, but it's there sometimes. And uh, that's something you should work to avoid now back to squats and there's gonna be a lot of videos and all this look the Hindu squat is great this way uh, oh and this position that I was just in that's great too so the Hindu squat is this way and this way so you go Now notice, and this isn't a tutorial on the Hindu squat or the other squat, notice my back is straight, right? But, a lot of you with big bellies, a lot of you with more fat, just simply, you know, a weak core, 
you're still going to, as you do those exercises, find yourself slouching a little ahead. And although this isn't the Hindu squat, as I explained in the book, Squat 101 is not a Thai-oriented exercise. Most people, when they first begin, they'll feel it there. Ideally, you should feel it in your chest, your upper back, your entire body, really. It's a, it's a deep breathing kind of thing, which once you get good at it, you'll figure it out. And it's, and, it's, and it's explained in great detail in the book. Now, when you do body weight squats, here's how you do them. So your legs are here, hands out, this way. Now, notice the difference. One, exhale. Inhale, notice the difference. Your notice the difference. I don't know if you can see it. Your back, number one, remains completely straight. There's none of that. And naturally, you're gonna pull your stomach in, kind of like with the plank. Uh, if you hold a plank, naturally you're going to hold your stomach in and those muscles will strengthen, you'll lose weight, lose fat around that area in your whole body and get stronger. And a lot of you, when you do body weight squats the way I teach you in Squat 101, you're not just going to feel them in the legs, you'll feel them in the mid-back. Um, that, my friend, and in the hamstrings. Uh, if you open the hamstrings up, my friend, your flexibility, that's, it's not just about your thighs, it's about the back of the body. I keep writing that, I've said that. It's about the upper back, the shoulders, everything. There's a good reason for the saying, can you back it up? Or when your back is against the wall, because your the back of your body, any martial artist will tell you, those powerful kicks, they don't come from the thighs, they come from the core and the back of the body, hamstrings included. And the regular squat, the body weight squat, does a superlative, fantastic job of training the hamstrings. And that's, that's basically what I'm talking about here. Now, which one should you do? Should you do both? Hell yeah, you should do both. You should get good at both. Because they both work the body, work the body a lot di uh, differently. But way too often, the regular body weight squat is ignored which should not be the case. And that, my friends, was the reasoning behind the Squat 101. And trust me, the body weight squats benefits, uh, benefits your body in ways, if you do them the way, the right way, I mean, they're not just squats. Um, there's something you should do every day. There's something you should do for the rest of your life. It ain't just me saying that either. If, you, if you've been reading other books and that, uh, by by people that really know what they're talking about, they'll say the same thing. Um, so essentially, it boils down to this. The Hindu squat is superlative, fantastic, great, deep breathing and all that, but you should never ignore the body weight squat either, because uh, they train the back of the body in a manner the Hindus don't, or in a manner that most when they do the Hindu squats, they cannot do. Ideally, the Hindus train the back of the body too, but because of the nature of the movement, you're going to find yourself focusing more on the front of the legs and the calves, and uh, although calves is back, I know that. But. So that's the reason, the nature of the movement. And um, that, my friend, will be, this, this video will be included along with Squat 101. Just to tell you, you know, uh, the reasoning behind the book, uh, one of the reasons, it's, it's not by far the only reason, but, you know, if you're serious about fitness, you owe it to yourself to get that book. Uh, and that's why, and never forget to train the hamstrings and the back of the body. And that's that for this video, my friend, and uh, if y'all are watching this as part of the paid download, well, enjoy the book, enjoy the paid work, enjoy the workout. And I'll see y'all soon.